Yep, you read the title correctly. I moved to Tokyo to be an AI researcher. But let's take a few steps back and see how I actually got there. At which company am I working? How did I find them? How did I apply? And how did I pass the interviews? The past few weeks and months were a bit hectic, so this video is something like a life update video, if you so will, where I try to answer the mentioned questions and many more. And ideally, you can gain some value from my experiences. So grab a tea perhaps, and let's just have a chat. I literally graduated like two months ago, and now I'm working at one of the best AI startups in the world, in Tokyo, Japan. All of this is still really crazy to me. So let's perhaps take a few steps back, like a year, and see what happened in these 12 months. Because there was a lot. So about a year ago, I basically finished my normal graduate studies, i.e. all of my seminars and classes with exams and so on, and I only wanted to do some research. So I looked for a new professor that was actually not at my normal university, for those of you who know me already, TU Berlin, um, but I looked outside because I wanted to have a pretty cool professor that also worked on something that I was interested in, multimodal learning. So I looked outside of TU Berlin and found a very new professor at uh, another university in another city that was four and a half hours away by the intercity train, which I, drew, um, which I took once a month to drive down there and I paid for everything myself and the Airbnb where, where I always stayed just to be there once a month and otherwise work remotely. And in the beginning, I got right to work. I mean, I knew roughly what I wanted to do. Well, honestly, it wasn't that clear to me. I wanted to do multimodal learning, but then I just read a lot of papers and fairly quickly saw an opportunity for what I wanted to try and experiment with. And in the first two or three months, I already got fairly decent or surprisingly decent results with what I had planned. Well, that is definitely nothing that is super clear that that will happen and it's fairly lucky actually but yeah it worked out and after three months that would be early january i started to look at a conference where i wanted to submit my work and the next deadline was in like two months or two months later at that time and yeah that were very stressful two months because getting from a single experiment that had good results to a whole paper is a lot of work. <laughs> so yeah, those were very stressful months, or two months, right? And then after I submitted, I could relax a bit. And at that point, more or less half a year had passed or five months. And I had to decide what to do after I graduate. I wasn't near graduating. I still wanted to just do research for half a year to really get some nice work out there. But after that, I had to think about what I wanted to do next. And basically my professor or my two professors, the best professors in the world, I love them and I love the whole team there, basically were apparently fairly happy with me as a graduate student and offered me, well, bas basically directly offered me a PhD position, which I was very happy to take. But then I also asked myself, well, you know what, let's just apply for researcher positions, right? Something that you usually need a PhD for. So I was very, yeah, I, I knew that I wouldn't get a job and I didn't apply to many positions. I just applied to the most outlandish positions that I could think of, um, which were DeepMind and OpenAI. Well, on the, well, in fact, I reached out to some recruiters and basically only one got back to me from DeepMind and I applied and long story short, I didn't get the job which was again, it was more or less clear to me, right? But then there was one more company that I really was interested in. And that company was something, a, a very new startup, a pretty famous startup already, at least in the AI world. And there I knew I wouldn't even get invited to an interview. I thought there it was even unlikelier. 
So I didn't apply. You see, the company that I'm talking of, and I will share which one it is, although you could already know if you follow me on LinkedIn, is quite famous because of their founders. One of their founders is a co-author of the Transformer paper, which most of you will perhaps know. It is the te technology used behind ChatGPT and all of the other LLMs. And one of the other co-founders is in and itself a really amazing and pretty famous researcher that also worked with someone like Jürgen Schmidhuber, who might not be someone you know of, but if you know, you know, he's a big guy. So the company that I'm talking of is also located in Tokyo, Japan, which makes the whole spiel much more interesting. And well, okay, I won't put you up to the test any longer. The company that I'm talking of is called Sakana AI. This company was my favorite company that I want to work at because of multiple reasons. First of all, they are in Tokyo, Japan, which is really cool because I'm a big fan of Japan, <laughs> not only because of anime and stuff like that. I genuinely just also like the culture and the food and the music and yada, yada, yada. But on the other hand, this company was something different. They weren't like the other startups or basically the entire other industry, which was just let's scale up larger language models, put more money in and put more compute in, and then just hope that we achieve AGI or whatever that is, right? This company wants to do amazing research and wants to do something else, something different and not just scale up. You literally see that in their logo. Their logo is like, I'll show it up right here. Um, the logo is like a fish swarm swimming into the one direction and one red little fish swimming away, <laughs> i.e. not just swimming with the current, you know, you, you, get, you get the metaphor. So it's, it's really, really cool. Additionally, one of the founding members of the startup was someone that I knew, someone that I met at my university, TU Berlin, and that I got along with very well. He's a really, really cool guy, and he also actually inspired me quite a bit to be a bit more adventurous with the research that I wanted to do. So all in all, I was really excited about this company, but I knew I would never get in there, right? They are a very new company. They only want to work with the best of the best. I looked at the application form and it literally said in the application form that their standards are very high and they don't want to be, they don't want to discourage the applicant if they don't get invited or accepted. And I was like, yeah, okay, let's forget about that. But one Thursday evening, I, I do remember that it was a Thursday evening, I was bored and I was like, you know what, what's the worst that can happen? I know I'm not bad at what I do, but you know, yeah, again, let's just apply. So I applied and two days later, I got an email from Sakana where it of course said something like, um, thank you for applying. We had a look at your application and after careful consideration, we blah, blah, blah. Now at that point, it's, it's always the same beginning. And then it always says, yeah, we decided to go further with or continue on with other candidates. It's that's, that's the standard message I always got. But then it said, congratulations. And I was like, hey, why, why are you saying congratulations if you just rejected me? So I read the message again and I saw that they actually invited me to the next round. <laughs> and I was genuinely quite surprised and also very excited, but mostly surprised and shocked because in that moment, I literally thought to myself, wait a minute, this now actually has a chance of becoming reality. And that would mean I have to move to Tokyo. <laughs> I literally didn't think of that when I applied. So yeah, that's that. Then the interview process began and I cannot speak much on the interview process. I am not allowed to share any details and that is absolutely understandable and fair. But what I can say is that some t at some point in the interviews, I felt pretty confident. I thought the interviews were going well. And in other points, I genuinely thought, okay, I'm lost because I didn't feel prepared for the questions that they asked because I, I, I didn't know the solutions off the top of my head. But every time I encountered this, these situations, 
I literally spoke to myself in my head and I, when I, when, at least when I caught myself and was like, okay, stop. You're talking more than you're thinking. So let's take a step back and just ask questions. And asking questions means that you understand the problem or you understand what you don't understand, um, which is really important for researchers. And yeah, let's just stay with that. And I was really surprised when I then got to the final call, let's say, which I also saw, thought was an in another interview, but it wasn't. It was just the confirmation call with the chef himself to yeah, discuss that we want to work together. And that was insane. Just this whole process was insane to me. And during all of that time, I was still pushing forward an answer to my professors at my university, which offered me a PhD position basically months ago. And I was always thinking, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy, but I have to think about it. But again, the most loving people, they are super great. <laughs> and they absolutely supported me with all of that once I told them. So yeah, that is that. So basically July, August was the time where I got the official confirmation, the contract, and I yeah, had to get ready to move to Tokyo. So if I had to try and collect my thoughts, so first of all, if you're still here, thank you. This is a very loose video and if you enjoy it so far, I'm very happy that you are. But to try and collect my thoughts again and answer that question of what I think helped me get the job was, was again, a bit of luck that I literally got out a paper or at least submitted a paper that was rejected, which is again, felt very normal, but that I had a paper, a first author paper with very strong results and quantifiable results, right? Beating state of the art and whatever that I could put on my resume, that I worked on side projects with another Google DeepMind researcher that I got to know through my professors, which is again, amazing. All of these things occurred only a few months before I decided to apply, which is luck, I guess, right? I knew at some point something like that would happen, but I thought that that would happen in a PhD. But I guess, again, I got lucky. I mean, I work hard, but still, in the end, I think it's a lot of luck. But yeah, so I had my paper or my first author preprint or paper, however you want to call it. I had some side projects that I could mention that I was working on. I had past projects, a, pa a past paper that I co-authored that, that was actually published at a top conference. Another project that I worked on that I submitted to a conference, which was still rejected, but so still something that I submitted and was an actual research work. Just many projects. And yeah, that helped me get an interview in the first place. And then a lot of work, just <laughs> a lot of work. There was a lot of what I had to work on I didn't know I haven't worked on before. So it was just, well, applying the things that you learn as a software engineer. And that is Googling, Googling, Googling until you solve all, all the problems. So yeah, that was that. And now I'm actually in Japan and I am, I have worked here at my job for three weeks now and my god, this company is so cool. I'm so nerding out about it. I, I'm really, really happy to be here. I'm, I'm really sorry. I don't want to be bragging or anything. It's, I'm just really excited and it's really cool. The team is amazing. The culture is amazing. The environment is amazing. It's not always the case that as a researcher at a company, you get to do the research that you want. So this company enables so much amazing work. The team is phenomenal. There are so many smart people. And don't get me started on imposter syndrome. <laughs> it is insane. I got here, most, most of my like, colleagues have PhDs um, and are amazing people who have, who have worked at Google DeepMind before and Meta or wherever. And they are so cool. And they are so smart especially the people who have a strong math background and I don't understand 
anything that they are talking about. I'm, I'm over exaggerating a bit, but it's really cool. And I feel like I do, I know nothing, but I know how to work a lot and I know how to acquire the knowledge that I need. So basically, and which is also good is I know what I want to work on as a researcher. I have my ideas that I want to explore and that is very, very important. So yeah, it's just me putting in the work, trying to learn as much as possible and as quickly as possible. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's phenomenal. It's so much fun. Now, I don't know how interested you are in the life here in Japan. So I just want to touch on that briefly. And it's a, it's a different world. It's so funny. I mean, I again, I really like Japan. I am a bit familiar with the culture and the etiquettes and so on. But what I mean specifically is the, th the simplest things that you would do in your normal life, like grocery shopping, takes so much longer because I literally walk around with Google Translate and translate everything because I have no idea what to buy. If I want to buy detergent and I use Google Translate and it says bleach, I'm like, I don't want bleach. I want I want detergent, laundry detergent. But afterwards, I I think I understood what, why it said bleach. It said clean as if it were bleach or whatever. But yeah, everything just takes much longer and everything is very new. Luckily, again, the company is amazing and they support me a ton with all of the things that I just literally can't take care of. For example, opening a Japanese bank account or getting internet into my apartment or getting a phone contract and stuff like that, which I, again, I could literally not do on my own. <laughs> it feels funny to be taken on by the hand so much, but it is what it is. So yeah, what does all of this mean for the future? I don't know, we'll see. I'm very happy to be here. I love my job. My full-time job is being an AI researcher, but I still want to create videos for you guys to try and share my experiences, try to show you what you can achieve, I guess, by loving AI and trying to put in the work. And yeah, I just hope that the content I share can provide you with some value. But I don't know. In the end, I'm just super lucky that I love my full-time job as much as I do. And the interesting thing is, I didn't even know of AI when I started my college studies. Many of you guys are in the beginning of their college studies and you already know that you want to do AI. So you can already get started with a lot of things I got started much later. So again, I just hope I can help with that. And if you still want to see what I went through to get from the beginning of my college studies, where I didn't know AI existed, to now being an AI researcher at one of the best AI startups in the world, only with a graduate degree, I guess you can say that, <laughs> then you might want to watch this video next. Well then, matane!